We're going to uh, look into uh, Avid Audio right now. How audio is handled in Avid and how you can manipulate it. We're going to go into the audio mode. Now, I do want to say one thing, though. In regular edit mode, here we are. These are the, the workspaces, right? Edit, color, effects, and audio. If I play... Hi, my name is Andrea Ramos, and I am a... You'll notice over here, there is a little audio meter always there. And so I'm going to just mute my speaker so I can play and talk at the same time. And you'll see, and you'll see, oh, gee, green and, and yellow, and maybe there's some other colors. So what does all that mean? And that's what we're going to start uh, with today. So I'm going to work in the audio workspace. And you'll see how the whole uh, composer window changes. Uh, basically what happens is we the window that shows us what's in our sequence or timeline is still there. Uh, this window gets replaced with a virtual audio mixer. If uh, you know, you've taken RTV F24, you use the mixer in the studio. So this basically is that. And then over here, you'll see a larger meter, audio meter. So we need to get a couple of things set. Number one, the idea of how to measure. Uh, with these meters, they're called peak meters. The idea is to keep your audio uh, within a certain level, so it doesn't distort. Uh, that's the one thing. The other thing, of course, is when you have more than one source of audio, like we're going to have music and other things and people talking, you're going to want it blended or mixed so that people can understand the parts you want them to understand. Where should the music be louder? Where should the talking be louder? Um, and, and also, you don't want to have the situation where within your sequence the audio all of a sudden is louder at one point and softer at another. You don't want people having to adjust their audio. One thing I found is that people are willing to forgive video. That's not so great, but they're not willing to forgive audio. That's not so great. Um, that's just the way it is, you know. So it's an important thing. And again, in the nonlinear process, this gets adjusted as you go along not necessarily perfect from the beginning. So let's go back to the initial step. So this is our main meter and I can, you'll see in between these windows, I can open it up a little bit more. And we're looking at this column here, the peak side. And you'll notice there is a zero and then a plus six, plus 12, minus six. Okay, these are the called decibels. Audio is uh, measured in a unit called decibels. Now up here, if I click this, I can play a calibration tone. Now what does that sound like? I'm going to put the speaker back on. That is your calibration tone. And you'll see, again, I'm going to mute it so that we can talk. You'll see that it peaks, meaning how high does it go, at zero. So zero doesn't mean nothing. It doesn't mean like Oh, I turned the volume down to zero. Zero is the norm of the audio, is the average point before you start to adjust it. Okay? And what you'll see is, even though that is the average point, for most talking and music, we're going to want to see it go beyond that into this zone, and you'll see that represented in yellow. So to stop the tone, I can just click anywhere and it'll go away. So I am going to uh, play the sequence here and watch. Let's watch the meter as I play it. Again, I'm keeping the audio muted so that we can uh, uh, listen to one another speak. So there we go. There's the lady speaking. And you could see how the audio comes beyond the zero and peaks here. You see the peak is the idea that how high each different word goes and it leaves a little mark. So this is very acceptable in this range. But now to adjust what they are saying, and let me just move this a bit like this. So here, when I'm sitting here, and now let's look at the meter 
and I'm going to move this. Actually, what I'm going to do is again reshape so I can see the full meter there. And let's zoom into that a little bit. And so what this represents are the two channels that we have in the timeline, one and two, okay? Represents the audio in the timeline. Audio one, audio two, audio one, audio two. This is the master output, right? Because or we can have many channels and they get all blended into a single output. Now, just to understand, again, there's a few concepts to go over, that by default, Avid sends out a stereo mix, a stereo mix. That means two channels, two sides, left and right. Okay, it blends it out. This is kind of classically how music is delivered, uh, how uh, programming, television programming is delivered in stereo. So if we would, you know, we do have the option to change that, but we wouldn't want to do that. Maybe I'll put it in mono at one point just to demonstrate. Here you can see 5.1 and different other direct outputs for other things. So stereo to channels. That brings into question this piece here, which is called pan pot, the panning, saying, well, what channel is my audio going to? By default, Avid has it in the mid-range, meaning it's going to both. Now, let me zoom out a bit. This audio really only has... Uh, audio on channel one, there's nothing on channel two. And that's the way it was done by the student who uh, recorded it. And how do I know that? Okay, we're going to go over here in the timeline. There's this little guy, track control panel. When I click that, oh, this opens up. I think we talked about the waveform. And if I click this now, this panel here, this waveform, shows me what's there, and this shows me what's here. And if we look at it, we'll see there is a flat line, nothing on channel two. Even though the camera recorded a channel two, there was no microphone connected. Here we see what's called a waveform showing amplitude and modulation. Okay, the amplitude is how intense the signal was, the up and down. We see, we see here on a snarl lady, it is not quite as intense a sound coming out because it doesn't quite reach the whole thing. On Dog Lady, you see it gets clipped off, meaning that it was actually recorded a little bit too loud. Okay, so it got clipped off. Here it was a little bit less. So when we play it, we're going to notice a difference in volume, even though it will be slight. So this tells me that the only uh, audio I really am concerned with is that on track one just so we know that. So let's go back to the mixer panel. And now if I play the clip, we can see that here's track one. Okay. And as it goes through each clip, it will change. Uh, here is track one, nothing on track two, but notice the master has audio on one and two. This is the master output. Two channels going out. Right now we have four channels, nothing on these, nothing on audio three and four. There is a very little bit of noise on audio two from the camera, but there was no mic connected. And there is the primary audio on track one. Okay, but because it's being sent out to the middle, when it goes out, it goes over both tracks. So again, I'm going to play it like this, so maybe you get a better idea. I'm playing, there is track one. Notice when it goes to black, in between clips, boom, it goes away, it gets grayed out, there's nothing there. I play it again, now it'll pick up the Snarl Lady clip, and there is that. Okay, so, and let's look over here at our main meter, easy to look at. So we have audio on both sides, left and right, coming through. If 
I change this mid-tone, this mid-panning, uh, sending it to both speakers equally, I can virtually grab it and drag it all the way to one side. So now it's going to the left channel only. Let me take the next clip. Okay, once I sit, notice how it resets. When I am on Dog Lady, I've changed it here. And when I go to Snarl Lady, that is unchanged. So I'm going to take her and send her the other way, totally to the right side. And let's do that one more with the next Dog Lady clip all the way to the left side. And then the next Snarl Lady clip, and then that'll be enough of that. So now when I play it, and if you remember when we saw uh, before the meter, even though the audio was only coming from channel one, and we'll still see that, that there's only audio on channel one from the original, when it's being sent out as the composite, people are hearing it uh, mixed. Before it was equal on both channels, what happens now? Now it's only on the one side. Goes to the next clip, dog lady, it will switch to the left side. Okay, so what would happen is if you had it set that way, um, you know, someone listening to your piece would all of a sudden, you know, the audio would go from one channel to the other channel. I don't know if you're going to be able to pick that up. I'm going to play it and maybe you'll be able to pick that up. Let's see. Hi, my name is Andrea Ramos and I am a volunteer foster uh, rehabilitator for SNAR Animal Rescue. SNAR stands for Special Needs Animal speaker. Rescue and Rehabilitation. Our mission is giving hope to the hopeless. I take in a lot of the fosters that need physical rehab, either due to congenital conditions, some who came in uh, after car accidents. We take dogs uh, from municipal shelters all over And the back on that side, so hopefully uh, you, you, you know, were able to hear that. Now, I, I can reset this. I'm going to go back to the dog lady. If, and rather than trying to grab it, I'm going to click on the, the virtual uh, control and hit the option key. Okay. Go here. Click the option key. Whoops, one, one, option key. And there is a way to kind of do it automatically for the whole thing, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Okay, so now they're back. And you'll see, again, they are going equally to both sides. Both it's Andrea panels. Ramos, and I am a volunteer foster uh, rehabilitator for SNAR Animal Rescue. So it sounds like they're coming in the middle. Okay. So if you notice here, let's work with Andrea because she's louder. Over here, I can adjust the volume. Okay. This is at zero. Remember, zero doesn't mean closed or nothing it means it's at the the normal volume for what was recorded okay if it was recorded very loud that's still the normal volume so you may have to adjust it what happens if i bring it up quite a bit and the maximum you can go here is plus 12 although there is a way in avid to even increase that but uh we may or may not get to that we'll see let's play and again i am going to mute it not to hear it but i want you to look at the meter play it Oh, well, now we're getting not only yellow, but brown and red. We never want red. Red is not good. Notice then back to normal with her because we didn't change her. So if you're playing the meter, and even if you're in the edit mode and you're playing here, you never want to see red. It means it's going to distort. It's going to be noise there. Uh, so you have to adjust the volume accordingly. If you saw... A little bit of brown even that is something you want to avoid for too much and once you get used to the peak meter you'll see that it's okay it just shows you a bit so you don't want to have red try not to have brown i mean if you have red it's maybe the, there's a sound effect of an explosion so just for a second it's there uh, that's understandable but not the way she was constantly slamming the red and you see it's all over the place so we got to bring her back down Again, I can, I'm just going to zoom in to show you, I can control, option click uh, that, and it goes automatically to zero. I can make it lower. Ooh, that's a mistake. Option click back to zero. So the idea is then 
for this basic thing, we're, we're just starting with the audio skeleton of people talking. The idea is that we're going to want it equal. So uh, again, I'm going to turn up the volume a little bit. And uh, rehabilitator for SNAR Animal Rescue. SNAR stands for Special Needs Animal. So she's a little bit less. So maybe I would, sitting on her clip, I'm going to raise her a touch. Let's raise her to dB or so, right? dB stands for decibel. Let's see if orally. A rehabilitator for SNAR Animal Rescue. SNAR stands for Special Needs Animal Rescue and Re Okay, I think we're good. We got, uh, if I'm looking here, I can see a little bit of brown hair. Animal Rescue. That's about the most I want. SNAR stands for Special Needs Animal Rescue and Re All right, so I would have to go through then and adjust each of the SNAR lady clips. And I've decided plus two, or here I have it, plus 2.2, whatever, uh, would be good. And then I, I would be happy that they are all uh, at a good level where people can listen to it. Okay, so I think that's enough to get you introduced to the measuring of the audio. Uh, there actually is one more thing, but I'll do that in the next step. So this is part one. Uh, there's a little associated quiz. So uh, why don't you review what I just went over and then take the quick quiz and then go on to part two.